hikers and campers. What's the scariest experience you've had in the woods? If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. I was mountain biking along a mountain road that connected two trails. I was passed by a pickup truck going the same direction as me. A few minutes later, the pickup passed me going in the opposite direction. I took notice but didn't think too much about it. When it passed me a third time going in the same direction as me, my spidey senses started tingling. I'm a woman and I was riding alone. The truck disappeared over a hill that I had just started climbing. When I got to the top of the hill, the truck was parked off the side of the road about 100 feet away, the guy was out of his truck, standing in the middle of the road, looking in my direction. I turned around, bombed down the hill and rode as fast as I could back to the single track where I knew a car couldn't follow. Scared the hell out of me. Strap in guys, this story is a pretty scary one that I hate thinking about. So last year my friends and I went hiking in Illinois. We were going camping deep deep in the wilderness. We parked the truck and headed in. We knew there would be some rain, but nothing like we ended up experiencing. We were three days from the truck and it just had not stopped raining. It rained the entire time we were out there. On the fourth day disaster struck. A flash flood came in. It swept away everything. We lost our radios, maps, food, tent, everything. We were stranded in the woods with nothing. We knew we needed to go back. It got worse, that night it got bitter cold because of how wet everything was, this was in June mind you, I ended up getting hypothermia. I became very very ill. I have no idea how my friends actually kept me up and going. I really really don't. Three days later we got back to the truck and I was rushed to the hospital. I took months to fully recover. I have never been so scared in my life. I really thought I was going to die. So a few years ago me and my now wife went hiking in the back country. I grew up on a farm and spent many nights sleeping outside and camped a lot growing up so random night sounds never bothered me much. My wife barely slept for three days because she was so scared of all the random noises. The scariest part of the trip for me though was when I saw mountain lion prints. The train was fairly damp from a light rain the night before and these prints were very fresh. My wife pointed them out to me as she spotted them first but I pretended to brush them off so she wouldn't freak out. Then after some time the prints left the trail and we stopped seeing them. We kept going but I kept watching behind us in case we were getting stalked. We were in the trees at this point and when we got out of the trees we heard something take off running deeper back into the trees. I'm 99% sure it was the mountain lion that gave up on stalking us. I lied and said it was a deer. I remember when I was kid driving down an old dirt road with my mom in the middle of the woods. When suddenly the car stopped abruptly. I remember looking at my mom and she had a look of horror on her face as she was looking out the of the front windshield. Then I looked out and saw what she was looking and have never been so scared in my life. There sitting in the middle of the road was a tiny little man almost like a Keebler elf only straight from your worst nightmare, from the depths of hell. He was just standing there hat and all staring at us for what seemed like an eternity. It seemed like my mom myself and this creepy little demon elf were all frozen in fear. Then all of a sudden this tiny little demon elf started to move, in fact it started to hop, it hopped away. It was a fucking rabbit. That's why when people say that have seen Bigfoot or a ghost, anything of the sort I give them the benefit of the doubt, because if my mom and I had turned around and left before the rabbit hopped away for the rest of our lives we both would have been convinced we saw a tiny woodland elf. Either that or creepy demon elves that live in the woods have the magic ability to turn into rabbits. My first and only time doing acid. I, being an idiot, suggested that my friend and I hike into the woods near my house to smoke and get our first kicks of acid in peace. We were standing in the pitch black, talking quietly and hitting a pipe, waiting because the acid was just barely starting to kick in. I was feeling good. Suddenly, an animal got caught probably 10 feet away from us in the dark. Don't know what animal, don't know what caught it, but the absolutely jarring break from total silence to baleful, hellish screams as something quite clearly was torn the fuck apart right next to us probably came closer than anything else to making me piss myself in fear. Imagine the sounds a cat would make if you grabbed it by the throat and tail and pulled, and it was worse. Gurgling, wailing, screaming, and a violent, thrashing struggle. Truly awful. I grabbed my buddy's arm like a little girl and we ran in the dark to the car. Lucky enough not to trip and break our faces over some critter's successful hunt. Would not trip in woods again. Camping with girlfriend and we slept in hammocks on both sides of a trail that lead to another family's tent. I kept waking up in the middle of the night to what I assumed was them walking to their car because they had a newborn so I didn't suspect anything, probably getting diapers or food. 
At around 5 am I wake up to the leaves surrounding me crunching. I didn't have a proper sleeping bag so I had tucked a blanket around me. When the leaves started crunching away from me I started ripping my blankets off of me, and looked over at my girlfriend who had this strung out teenage boy, from the other side of the campground, leaning over her reaching for something in her hammock. She woke up, started screaming at him. This kid tried to say he was just looking and he walked away. Turns out he was reaching for her knife she kept at her side. I could totally understand him trying to just steal it because it's expensive, but our table had weed, beer, our phones, wallets and a Bluetooth speaker that he didn't even touch. When we were driving out of the campground, he was wandering back and waved at us with the creepiest grin. Not hiking or camping, but hunting. I was sitting on a hill that dropped off into a ravine with another hill on the other side. I was sitting for about an hour, watching the deer run across the top of the hill on the opposite side from me, down the hill and down into the ravine, just waiting for one to go through the ravine and up the hill I was sitting on instead of running straight through the ravine. Finally, I see a deer on the top of the other hill run down the hill and through the ravine. About 5 or 6 minutes later I hear the leaves rustling and branches breaking and see some movement about 20 yards in front of me, slightly to my right. I raise my shotgun, ready to take the shot as soon as the deer walks into a clear enough spot for me to do so. More movement, this time closer, my finger is on the trigger as I see the movement moving towards a clearing, this is it, I'm going to take my shot, into the clearing walks a man and his son, the kid couldn't have been more than 10 or 11 years old, neither of them were wearing a speck of orange, no hat, no vest, no gloves, nothing, just their camouflage gear. I still get the shakes when I think about how close I was to shooting this man in front of his kid because he decided to go into the woods during hunting season while wearing no orange, which is the law here in Ohio. That incident scared the shit out of me and I didn't go hunting again after that a very long time. I went on short vacation to a state park by myself. No one knew where I was going. Then I took a hike by myself and didn't even tell the desk, I stayed in the park's lodge, where I planned on going. Yes, I got lost even with a trail map. I happened upon a trail marker and saw that trail would eventually lead me to the main road going to the lodge. It was marked expert. I am not an outdoorsy person. I figured a state park expert trail in Indiana could not be so very hard. It was. I was climbing over fallen trees and scooting around sinkholes, very scary. I kept hearing rustling behind me, would turn around and see nothing. Finally I sat on a log and figured if there was a crazy person in a hokey mask following me, he could just kill me, I was too tired to run. No crazy mask person chipmunks. Went camping with some friends on hill a few kilometers out in the woods from one of the guys house. There's a few hiking slash four wheeling trails in the area that lead up to the hill so it's known by the locals. It was about midnight we had a fire going and we're just sitting around having a good time, then the guy, there was four of us, sitting opposite of me yells who are you. I turn around and there's this man, about 6 feet tall staring at us from the edge of the woods with a big rock in his hand. One guy knocked an arrow in the compound bow we had, the guy across from me grabbed the hatchet and I pulled the knife off my belt. We had no clue what we were doing but the guy wouldn't say anything to us. He eventually just backed into the woods. No sleep was had that night and we kept a very large fire going. I spent a fair amount of time in the woods hunting slash camping slash hiking so there's been a bunch more but this one always stuck out to me. When I was 14, my family and some friends of ours got lost snowshoeing on Mount Rainier after dark. A fresh snowfall had covered up the trail marker telling us to turn down the ridge we were climbing on. To make matters worse, it had been snowing all day, covering everything with this fine powder that even snowshoes couldn't keep you from sinking down into. My friend who weighed like 80 pounds could just bounce along on top of the snow, but my dad sunk in past his knees with every step he took. To get back to our car, we had to slide slash walk down a steep stretch of the ridge, and then cross over a creek. I found it to be an exhilarating, albeit scary, experience. My dad, however, was absolutely freaked out. My other scary wood story was also more terrifying and traumatizing for my dad, and my older sister, than it was for me. They both watched as I fell like 10 to 15 feet off a boulder, onto a rocky creek bed, in the middle of the Olympic National Forest. I turned out to be okay, but if I hadn't been, someone would have had to hike 3 plus hours to the car, and then drive the car 20 minutes down the road just to get cell reception to call 911. We had a group of families that would meet annually to canoe, hike and camp near the Teleco River. I was about 9 years old the night we ended up on Rattlesnake Ridge. To be fair, it was a local name not on the map. Our four families had been looking for a camp with a view and this spot looked out over a long, green soft smoky mountain valley. We pitched camp, tents, Coleman stoves and coolers, 
set up a fire pit in the middle and stacked up wood. Just before dusk the park ranger pulled up. He asked the bed of us, dinner plates in hand, if we planned to actually stay the night right here on Rattlesnake Ridge and most of us laughed but he looked real serious when he said it was probably not a good idea. Lots of bites out here he said shaking his head hospital is real far away. Hate to go through that again. One or the other adult reassured him we would be fine and he left shaking his head. A nervous laughter, our bellies full, the guitars and singing ensued and the sun fell. Finally, after some time, someone said there are no snakes up here at the exact moment a five-foot snake, of undetermined species, slithered between two of us and directly into the campfire we were sitting around. It flipped around for a second sending embers into the sky like life itself escaping its twisted body. I have never seen 14 people get into their tents so efficiently. Pro tip, do not spend the night anywhere named Rattlesnake Ridge. My girlfriend and I were off-roading in the woods by some mountains. My aunt was driving while we bounced around in the back seat. It's pitch black in the middle of the night, and the trails are really narrow maybe a foot of room between the sides of the car and the tree line. The ride itself was no trouble, but as we were rolling off the trail and back onto the highway, my girlfriend grabs my arm. She gets close to me and says I didn't want to tell you anything when I saw it, because I didn't want to scare you, but we drove past a tree with a noose on it. The trees are small, but sturdy off the path. Apparently, she says, the noose was dangling high enough to be at eye view, and there was a lot of extra rope and space for someone to pull a person up. I just couldn't help but think of how, even with high beams, we could barely see five feet in front of us. It would be easy for someone to lay a trap to slice our tires, then come from the trees and grab us when we went to investigate. We were so far out, no one would hear a thing. And on the hundreds of trails, largely unused, the odds of someone coming across us weren't high. We won't be going back to find the noose anytime soon. Dove Stones Reservoir is located in the arse end of nowhere and miles away from civilization. It's genuinely a beautiful place to visit during the summer, you can go swimming, jump off waterfalls, hike to the tallest point of the hills and just generally appreciate the wildlife and nature, and if you know the place well enough you can find the remains of a World War II plane. However, being there at night is an awfully creepy place. It has a deadly silent atmosphere, you can honestly hear a moth far it's that quiet. You're left in the emptiness of the nothing, although the stars light the place up, you can barely see in front of yourself. It's like a generic horror move setting, it's ridiculed with urban legends, swingers and is notoriously known for where Ian Brady and Mira Hendley brutally murdered and buried five children. Anyway, one summer we all collectively decided to camp there one night. So a few of us go down earlier in the afternoon to have a few beers and enjoy the weather, whilst everybody else decided to meet us at later times once they had finished work or whatever. Once we were all together, we spent a few hours going off the trail, sneaking past farmhouses and trying to find an area discreet enough not to draw any unwanted attention, as it has a reputation for frequently hosting free parties and illegal raves. We find our location, set up camp, light a fire and start the party. Many beers and smokes later, I kind of forgotten where I was, this Blair Witch Starter Pack scenario, because I became comfortable with my surroundings and was soaking up moment. A friend who had left the party to go search for a safe place to piss, came running back moments after leaving, demanding we turn the music off and was convinced he heard something. He's one to mess around, it's something we would expect him to do, so we laughed it off. He looked shocked, not alarmed or even terrified, but used that look and tone your dad uses when he's starting to become impatient with you. We cut the music and sit there in silence for no more than five minutes, before we eventually brush it off as the weed making him paranoid. The music goes back on, and within that few faint seconds of the song transitioning from one track to the other, we heard the most blood-curdling scream. The scream sounded like a woman was terrified for her life, it was a short and powerful scream that echoed throughout the woods. We cut the music and were all certain of which direction it came from, a few yards behind our tents. We all stood there in complete shock and nobody said a word, for what felt like hours, until somebody started laughing as they realized a couple were missing from the group and it had to be them trying to mess with us. A second scream is heard, but this one is louder and a lot closer. The couple that were missing, come ripping out of the their tent and straight towards us with a genuine look of pure horror on their faces. They insisted it wasn't them, and were convinced it was us playing a prank on them. A third scream dominates over our conversations, worse than the previous ones and it sounded sinister. We all froze, nobody knew what to do or what to say, we had nowhere to go. A tent started to violently shake, we were all accounted for and we were all shitting it. We see a figure pop up from behind the tent and throw something in our direction, whilst out of nowhere, a second, more larger figure jumps out from the trees next to us. 
my best friend tackles the second figure to the ground and starts laying in punches, whilst another friend makes pursuit for the person behind the tent. The figure that jumped from out the trees next to us, was begging for my best friend to stop punching him, he knew his name and had a voice we all recognized it was his dad, and when my friend who caught up to the figure from behind the tent, discovered it was best friend's mom. They had been stalking us all day, without us realizing, waiting for the perfect opportunity to fuck with us all as a payback from a prank we had previously played on them. They stuck around for a while and had a few beers with us before they made their way home. I'll never forget how terrified I was that night. Well played. Not exactly a trek but was visiting my native village once. Me and my cousin, who lives there, was walking back through a wooded area. It was pitch black, though it was only around 6.30 pm, and the power was out. Well, we heard footsteps behind us and in our torchlight we saw a man walking in the distance who looked like our grandfather. Now, we had just left our grandfather back at his place and were walking to our cousin's place so we were a bit surprised, particularly about him walking in the dark without a torch. So we slowed down a bit to allow him to catch up. The distance between us remained the same. We could see him walking but he was not getting near to us. I glance at my friend and we both took a few steps towards him. Still the same distance. We got spooked and started walking slash jogging towards my cousin's house in the dark. Whenever we glanced behind, the figure seemed at the same distance to us, walking steadily, with his eyes on the ground. Well, we reached his home, looked out and couldn't see anyone. Next day we asked our grandfather if he was alright and narrated the incident. He said he had dozed off and dreamed about us walking through the woods. When I was a kid 6 or 7, my parents would take my brother and I camping all the time. There was one time where we were camping out in the middle of this forest where you would pay to have your own section on a trail. My dad picks one that is at the end of the trail so that we don't have people walking past us in the morning to go to the restroom slash showers in the morning. Probably the second night we were there my dad lets us stay up till 1230 which is a big fucking deal when you're a kid. He's telling us all these scary stories and we're having the time of our life. Just as we're about to go to bed we see a figure biking towards us. I figure that it's a park ranger or someone to see if we're doing alright. Nope. This guy, who is completely hammered, gets off his bike, and starts walking toward our site. As he's walking up, I see that he has a rifle on his shoulder. He begins by saying something like why you guys in my spot. And all this weird shit about how he stays here every night. My dad politely asks him to leave, but I can tell my dad is starting to tense up. This guy starts completely going off on my dad. My dad stands up, and the guy moves for his rifle off of his back. As soon as that happens, my dad reaches into the fucking fire and throws a log at the dude, then my dad tackles him, and told my mom, my brother, and I to run for the park rangers. We run and tell the rangers, who were already looking for the guy, and they go and help my dad. My dad was taken in for questioning and let off the next morning. His hands were bruised as fuck, but he had no burn marks. We went camping in Rocky Mountain National Forest. It was towards the end of May when there were storms coming through and the snow was still melting. The designated camping space that we got a permit for was on the other side from a stream from the hiking trail. There may have been a bridge at some point, but there was no longer. No big deal, there was a tree that had fallen down and we used it to cross. The entire night it stormed and poured rain. Water leaked into the tent and it was freezing the whole night. By the time we had woken up in the morning, hardly any of us, myself and three friends, had gotten hardly any sleep. When it came time to cross the stream to head back down the trail, the water had raised by a couple feet and was rushing at a great pace. So here we are trying to cross this wet fallen tree with no branches to balance ourselves and hope we didn't fall in the water. We were lucky none of us got seriously hurt from either hypothermia or falling into the stream. Me and my brother were climbing in the valley of the moon on the Mexico slash Californian border. We ran into a some Minutemen drunk dudes with guns in a pickup, but they just said hi and moved on. That's not the scary bit. So we're climbing this rock. It's a big rock, I'd say 5-6 stories high. I'm belaying, my brother is top roping to get to the top and set the rope for me to climb. He gets to the top and is about to set the rope. Keep in mind there is no quick way on or off this rock. Even if he'd set the top rope it would have been dangerous to rappel down in a hurry. All of a sudden there is this tremendous buzzing that just absolutely fills the air, an absolute cacophony. This incredible swarm of hornets just rises up out of the ground under the rock, just huge and there's nowhere for my brother to go. He can't fast rope down, there's nowhere for him to run that isn't a sheer drop. So he just curls up into a little ball. The swarm did, thankfully, not attack, it just kind of. Flew off. 
You could see it going for ages, like a huge black cloud. Not sure why they didn't attack but thank god they didn't because I have no idea what he would have done, probably run off of this rock in a panic. It still makes me quite alarmed, even just remembering it. I love to camp but have a lot of city friends. In college I used to take big groups of friends camping by our local river every weekend. It was usually really fun. We lost inhibitions, drank lots of alcohol, skinny dipped, started and stopped relationships, made best friends. Once, it was scary, even a little for me. Most fell asleep with some light howling and yipping on the horizon. I told them that they were coyotes and were way more scared of us than we are of them. That is usually true, but that was not true with a bunch of drunk Japanese girls. Well, they all fell asleep. My best bud and I were big night owls. The yipping got a lot closer but we weren't concerned. We got in my tent and about 15 minutes later every tent started tussling, yipping, fighting, biting, and growling started happening all around us. I've never heard a pack of coyotes this big and bold. They aren't usually so close to humans. I yelled and banged around. They didn't give a shit. We didn't have any food out and they eventually left more or less without a trace. I thought I'd have a bunch of horrified town folk on my hands and was prepared to never camp again. Apparently everyone was drunk. No one woke up and no one believed us. Scary-ish. But cool as shit. Hiking on the Appalachian Trail, down in the Smokies, North Carolina. I had been alone for a while, seeing some folks off and on. I came up to this lento, totally empty but in the journal it looked like there'd been a party every night for the last week, so I had high hopes. I built a small fire, took a jigger of whiskey from my flask, and sat back to welcome my partiers. About two hours later, it had started raining a bit and these two guys came down the trail. Both were fit dudes, wearing sandals and short sleeved shirts, at 8 p.m., in the rain, in the middle of the mountains. At the time, I didn't think much of it. So we chilled together and passed the flask. They were two army soldiers on leave from Iraq or wherever, and decided to escape for a few days. And then I went to get something from my bag and my pipe rolled out. Both guys got excited and asked if we could smoke. I said sure. We lit up, and had a rockin' good time. And then, around midnight, both guys stood up, packed their bag, and said goodnight. And left. What the fuck? It was now pouring down rain, I, and I presume they, too, was hammered and high, and now these two guys are just going on, in the middle of the night? Yay, I was terrified they were going to come back, and kill and eat me. I was so scared, and stoned, that I slept with an open hunting knife, across my chest, ready to attack anyone who came near me. I went camping with some friends near Loch Lomond in Scotland. We set up camp about three miles into the woods near a small river and got the fire going to cook some food we brought with us. The site was very remote but in the evening a couple of guys hiked through and stopped to chat, they were from Poland and seemed friendly enough but asked a lot of questions about our group, how many we were etc which left my a bit suspicious but I put it down to different cultures. At about 10 pm I started to feel very ill and thinking it was possibly food poisoning or poorly cooked meat, I never cooked it, decided I would be better getting my fiancé to pick me up, we lived about an hour away by car. My friends were all pretty drunk and I had drunk about 4 or 5 cans of Budweiser. Stupidly I packed my bag after throwing up hard for 15 minutes and decide to hike back to the main road with light fading. I'm about a mile into the hike back, and at this point I've been sick twice and am completely sobered up by all the throwing up. I've got a sports bottle full of water and stop for a drink to wash my mouth out, at this point it's near pitch black so I go into my bag to get out my torch, small knife and my .22 air gun I brought for snagging a rabbit. As I start zipping my bag back up I hear twigs snap nearby and assume it's a rabbit or a fox, I shine my torch and see nothing but at this point I'm not worried and carry on. Five minutes later I hear what sounds like running maybe 100 yards behind me and a lot of twigs snapping, I turn around assume it's my friends who are fucking with me, I call out I know someone is there and I shit you not, see movement in the trees possibly 70 to 80 feet away. At this point the sickness is gone, my heart is pounding in my chest, the hair on my neck is standing up and I get this feeling that I can only describe as feeling almost dizzy at the surreal position I'm in. I take off my rucksack and hang at a stump of a tree and kill my torch. I've got my knife in my jacket pocket and I've got the pistol gripped harder than my cock when I was 14. I walk in the darkness for about 100 yards and stop dead behind a tree and wait, I'm trying my hardest to control my breathing which is pretty difficult at this point. Sure enough I hear movement somewhere again, very difficult to pinpoint but it's getting closer. At this point I'm caught in two minds, to continue to hide or to confront. I decide the latter and burst out the bush flashlight on and weapon ready. 
I point my torch in the general direction of noise and there are some branches moving, I start moving towards the area like a fucking SAS trooper with my pathetic point two two. I hear movement in the distance with a lot of twigs breaking, I don't actually see anything or anyone but at this point even if it is one of my friends I'm shooting the bastard. Silence again and I wait a few minutes and head back for my backpack, it's not hanging over the branch stump anymore, it's on the ground below it and that's probably the scariest part for me because whatever I had been chasing could never have beat me back to my bag, so something or someone else had to move it. The branch was intact, as was the strap on the bag so assuming I hung it up correctly which I honestly can't recall, something else was nearby. At this point I tabbed out of there onto the main road pretty sharpish with no incident. My fiancé was waiting at a lodge nearby to pick me up, at which point I was violently sick. I told her about it and she was pretty freaked out. To this day I don't know exactly what happened, if I was trolled by a friend, I asked and they all denied it, or a fox or whatever, I do know that I absolutely shit myself. I go camping at the same spot up in NH a couple of times each summer. It's a wonderful spot with a stream that goes around it, very secluded, and there's a large area with no trees so you can see plenty of sky. That is where the fire pit is. It was around 3 am, my and a group of friends were all getting sleepy after a long night of drinking and eating. The fire was burning down to just embers. We're all quietly staring into the fire, letting the darkness creep in. Four of us are on one side, and my friend Mike is on the other side of the fire pit in a chair. I was holding a flashlight, and for some reason I decided to briefly hit the on button and shine a quick beam of light at Mike. I hit the button, and in that flash of light we saw Mike and a huge coyote or wolf standing directly over his shoulder. It was bigger than most coyotes I've seen, it looked, well-groomed, it bounded off so quickly over the stream it was as if it disappeared. We all freaked and jumped up to make the fire bigger. We were all pretty awake after that. What was funny was, all Mike saw was a brief beam of light and our faces go from calm to pure horror, and all of us jump up simultaneously. Oh, the time I nearly died. Was sent camping for two weeks as a young teen, 12 to 13 yo, at a remote YMCA camp with my younger sibs while my parents went out of the country for a second honeymoon. The camp sits right on the Oregon coast, with a river bordering it on one side, and mountainous terrain blocking the camp on the other side. Campers boat in and because it's pretty much cut off from the rest of the world, the camp has a number of staff that live on site, because any individual leaving in an emergency would need a helicopter ride. I turned 13 just a couple days prior at camp and to celebrate birthdays as well as the 50th anniversary of the camp, a dance was held in the Great Hall. All the kids are there plus counselors and I'm hanging out with my cabin mates desperately trying to avoid my younger sibs while still trying to act cool and aloof for the pack of teen boys with which we all desperately wanted to slow dance. A boy steps up to the group. Does he want to dance with Tegan or Jennifer, the two most popular girls? No. He asks to dance with me. As he leads me to the dance floor, what I'd taken as butterflies in my stomach, spread over my whole body. I feel jittery and overly flustered but I was the first girl asked to dance and all my friends are watching enviously, so it's natural I'm feeling a bit nervous. We dance for a bit, and then he looks deep into my eyes as he starts to lean in close. Now I'm ridiculously nervous. My first kiss. He's going in for a kiss. Just as he's a hair's breath away, in 13-year-old boy fashion, he says, wow, you look really weird. And suddenly it was as if a switch were thrown. An intense wave of nausea fell on me and everything in the room started looking garish and feeling a bit too close. I run off the dance floor and start stumbling down the stairs for the bathrooms down the path. All my girlfriends run after me, screaming my name because they thought my dance partner had offended me and I was running off to have a cry. I start vomiting before I even get to the bathrooms, uncontrollable stand by me levels of vomit. I'm mortified and desperate to hide away from my social suicide, but I'm having a hard time trying to even walk. I can't catch my breath. It's like a 50 pound weight is sitting on my chest and my throat feels tight like I've been screaming or crying for hours. My cabin mates are in a panic because here's their friend flopping about on the bathroom floor and she's obviously losing her shit. The four of them each take a limb and start dragging me through the camp towards the doctor's cabin. Everything is going black, but I start to figure out that now I'm on a cabin floor and there's a man straddling my chest and slapping me in the face. He's asking me something but I can't really understand or even talk. What's going on? Is this guy a pedophile or something? How did I get here? My whole body feels like it's on fire and all I want to do is scratch all my skin off. Then I see a woman standing over us both and she hands something to the doc. It's a needle and he injects me with something. Fuck. I'm dead. He's drugging me and then he's going to rape and kill me and bury me in the woods. 
But, just three seconds later and I have a freight train running through my body. I feel hyper aware and jittery, but in a way too much coffee kind of way. That's when I notice my friends are all crowded around the door. The woman is the camp nurse and she's on a radio calling someone. The man is the doctor and he's not on my chest, but crouched over me and he's asking me what I ate for dinner. I tell him nothing unusual and yes, I've eaten all those things before. After a time, he finally figures out I'm allergic to mosquito bites. He could finally see that I was covered from head to toe in them once the hive started going away. When I was a teenager we took a week-long canoe trip on the Moose River in Maine with the Boy Scouts, this was an area near the Canadian border where you had to drive at least an hour on dirt roads with no one around besides the occasional crazy logging truck driver to even access the river. One night we stopped to camp and the area where we stopped had a somewhat wide grass path leading away from it which we dubbed the lane this was a night with no moon and it was the darkest that I had ever seen, you literally couldn't see your hand a foot in front of your face if you didn't have a flashlight on. We decided to take a little late night hike down the lane to see what was going on there so we hiked down maybe a half mile then we happened to see a moose nest, so we quickly noped it right out of there. Moose are absolutely not to be fucked with, they're gigantic and will fuck you up just as bad as any bear if they feel threatened. About halfway back down the lane some of the other guys who had stayed behind apparently decided to prank us and they jumped out from the sides of the trail and screamed. We were already super on edge about there potentially being an angry moose nearby and I was so startled I think I came very close to passing out. Once my heart slowed back to a somewhat normal rate I we started walking back to the campsite. But once we were back I realized that in my terror I had dropped the scoutmaster's expensive flashlight back halfway down the lane, so I had to walk back down the godforsaken thing towards the moose nest to retrieve it. I grew up in the Rocky Mountains and spent a lot of time in the wilderness when I was younger. One time when I was about 13 my father and I went on a multiple day tip. We hiked up a steep trail and set up camp in a little basin near a pond way above the tree line. That evening we went to sleep in our little two-man tent. During the night I kept hearing something moving around and strange noises. I woke up, poked my father and told him but he just said it probably a small animal and to go back to sleep. He spent a lot of time in the mountains and nothing much fazed him so went back to snoring. I kept hearing noises but did not want to bother him again so just lay in my sleeping bag cuddling my rifle waiting to die. It was pretty late in the year and we were way above where any bears would be but I could just not fall back asleep. My ears and brain were working over time in the darkness. Finally after a sleepless night it got light and I got out of the tent. It had snowed just a few millimeters overnight on the bear ground and although our camp were cougar tracks. It had circled our tent multiple times and right a foot away from where my head was went back and forth down the side of the tent. After it checking out everything in our camp for who know how long it wandered off. We followed the tracks for a while till they went into the rocks and disappeared. All my father had to say was, so you did hear something. I was leading a freshman orientation trip along a section of the Appalachian Trail. It was a four day slash three night hike and camping trip where the freshmen were supposed to bond and get comfortable being away from home for likely the first time. Our first day was designed to be an easy one. Hike in a few miles after driving out to the beginning of the trail and then set up camp. That part went easy enough, but the night had plenty of surprises for us. Now as an aside, we were all college students on this trip. As a result, the leaders were warned that the freshmen might be thinking they can get away with sneaking booze or weed on these trips since there was no adult supervision. Personally, I could have not cared less if they did but since I was responsible for their safety I had to aware. So around midnight when I wake up to this horrible guttural and choking sound from where half of the freshmen were sleeping my brain immediately jumps into holy shit, one of the freshmen got drunk and is choking on his own vomit mode. My adrenaline was through the roof because I was petrified that my trip would be the first one that a freshman died on. Turns out, it wasn't a freshman choking on his vomit but a full-grown female moose smelling one of the sleeping freshmen. And when we all woke up and turned our flashlights on the massive beast freaked the fuck out. The thing came barreling towards me and probably would have trampled me to death had I not rolled out of the way, I was in a sleeping bag and pretty immobile. The range of emotions I went through in that 30 seconds was probably the most exhausting part of the trip which included hiking multiple mountains peaks in a day. Was motorcycle camping across the United States. I've done my fair share of camping in weird places, seen some weird slash freaky slash scary stuff over the years, but honestly the scariest thing that has ever happened to me happened twice. Last year I was riding from Los Angeles up the west coast to Seattle over a month or so into my 3,264 mile trip, zigzagging up inland camping at state parks and just absorbing the local way of life and seeing what the US had to offer. I got to Crater Lake National Park when a fire hit. Mind you, I have T-Mobile, which all along the lost coast, 
everywhere north of San Francisco actually, has no T-Mobile but at which T-Mobile allots 50 megabytes that's right 50 megabytes of data a month dubbed roaming which I used up in roughly the first 10 minutes while listening to Spotify and Google Maps. So no news updates, no outside info, I ride up to the entrance to the park and bam. All of a sudden a gust of wind hits and I look over to the left and there's fire everywhere. Smoke takes over the roads, I feel like I can't breathe, I close my helmet fully and I can't even see my hand in front of my face. Do I pull over? No fucking way. I keep riding blindly hoping to pass whatever is going on. I have all my gear on the bike weighing it down, I can barely breathe and I can't see two feet in front of myself. I get to a point where I felt like I couldn't turn around and just had to keep going forward very slowly very carefully and prepared to ditch everything if the moment should arise when a beam of headlights is barreling towards me. It's like this inherent power took over a fight and survive and my adrenaline is pumping, eyes are wide, heart is pounding, I feel like my asthma I had when I was a kid is back, smoke is horrible on the tongue. I rode what felt like 3 hours, what probably was 4 miles and made it through. Holy shit was that scary as hell. I gotta dig up some photos of that later, but for now here's something very similar I went through last week in Oklahoma on motorcycle, while riding and camping across country on my journey I am doing right now from Los Angeles to New York. I used to live in Alaska. I haven't had anything too crazy, but I'm a little nervous around wildlife as they can be unpredictable and well, they're wild. Moose scare the shit out of me when they're in close quarters. Hiking on a trail and turn a bend and there's a moose and her calf's like 15 feet from me. She just sat there and looked at me but goddamn she was absolutely massive and her size demanded respect. Any close encounter with a bear is pretty unnerving. Walking a trail and seeing a kill, probably a rabbit, sight right where I was. Fur was very fresh. Some fresh blood but not much blood knowing it could very close and could attack at any minute if it desired. It's a love-slash-hate experience when you're camping out there in the wilderness. It's absolutely beautiful out there. Just sitting down or laying down in the nice grass surrounded by beautiful trees and birds and wildlife. But at least for me, I'm never truly calm. I'm always nervous as fuck. I hear a crash of a twig, or I sense something and I freak out and go for my gun. Even though it can make me really tense, it's a good thing to know you're not on the top of the food chain out there. These were just some things that made me nervous and tense while in the woods Lamel. This happened pretty recently. It was only my second time camping, and everyone was really excited because me and my two best friends were driving up a bit further than usual and we planned to get wasted to death. To begin, there were a few setbacks leading up to me borrowing my dad's truck or reschedule. We arrive and immediately realize nobody has phone signal. We probably should have expected it but we, no big deal. I ask the guy at the campsite if I could use a phone to call my dad and he gives me 3 minutes. I try to quickly wrap up my conversation whilst filling out forms and we finally leave to pick a campsite. Everyone has fun, it starts to rain so we actually call it an early night. Next morning we decide to eat and then walk around. We have a sort of disagreement amongst us and rush off and take our time coming back. We get back and my friend says guy something came into our campsite and it was not small I think he's kidding but he picks up our cooler with bite marks scratches, and a bunch of leaves that got inside. I look around and the one neatly tied trash bag remains were scattered everywhere. We start to clean and I'm trying to figure out which animal would be around us to which he confidentially decides coyote and I said I'll just ask on our way out. As I'm cleaning I spot a baby black bear a couple of feet away from us but I try not to panic. Too late, as soon as I point it out, one friend says fuck it and jumps in the car. My other friend is yelling at me to get in the car but I pick up a stick to try to scare it while I'm desperately putting everything away and trying to not let this bear win. He doesn't seem to be phased and managed to jump in the car before it got too close. We think oh god, we have to warn the others. So we drive off and find out of the camping site guys and we proceed to get scolded for leaving trash and the possibility of having the bear killed. I reached into my back pocket and unfolded the waivers I signed acknowledging me about black bears and the distance in which they can smell. Oh my god. We all felt terrible. On our way out of checking out, I heard them warning a lady about black bears and telling her how they just had to run a black bear off a campsite because a few out of towners came and didn't know about black bears. Equals we promised to never go back there. I have to say we were super lucky we didn't fall asleep with our cooler outside of the car that night. I decided to go backpacking with my girlfriend at this really beautiful camp in our state. Everything I read about our camp said it was like a three quarters mile hike to the camping spot. Now, I am stupidly strong, I was not worried at all if the hike was going to be longer than that while I carried equipment. My girlfriend is pretty strong too, but she doesn't really have much in the cardio game going on. 
We grab our tent, backpacks and a few other items and started hiking. It was 7 p.m. when we set out and the sun was already setting. The path was entirely covered in stones. There were no maps indicating the way. After half an hour, we reach a marker stating that the backpacking camps were spread out around the edge of a small lake. There were three marks on the map for the camps, we were camp three. None of the marks were numbered. Two camps were close together, the third camp was kind of on its own. Now, it kind of makes sense to me that the furthest camp would be camp three, right? The way the map was set up, if we took the wrong path, we would basically have to walk the entire shoreline in order to have a chance at hitting out campsite. And that is precisely what happened. So, night is falling, visibility is getting low and the whole time we are navigating all of our shit over giant fucking rocks. Also, my girlfriend is yelling at me. Night set. I turned on my headlamp and found a few reflective markers every 10 or so yards. I figured that was marking the trail, which at this point, about 4 miles. We finally got to our camp a little after 9. We put up our tents, I had a significant amount of whiskey and we fell asleep. The view of the lake in the morning was pretty stunning, but I don't know if it was worth the trip. Music